thank you. It's uh, sponsored by Abbott. Thank you to Abbott. And uh, thank you to Dr. Chris Metzger, who continues to work on a Saturday. Really appreciate you, Chris. Uh, here I have with me um, on the panel our great friends, uh, Dr. George Pliegas, uh, Dr. Lawrence Garcia, and Dr. Brian Fisher. And we're here to support you and discuss the case with you. Back to you, Chris. Great. Fantastic, Jihad. Can you see and hear us okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so listen, we're, we're uh, again, welcome back to Kingsport, Tennessee for our fourth one today. Uh, we're thrilled to be part of AMP, and, and uh, congratulations, uh, Jihad, on, uh, is this 10 years this year? Yes, it's our 10th anniversary, yeah. So congratulations and happy anniversary. Uh, and also, I'd like to echo your thanks to Abbott Vasker uh, for supporting this session and all that they do in the, uh, in the Vasker and coronary space uh, and in, uh, in true research and education. So uh, it's an honor to be part uh, of their uh, session as well. Uh, so it's a Saturday in Tennessee, and I want to just give one more thanks to a team that's done uh, four cases plus a backup plus a STEMI uh, and smiled at every stage along the way, despite with me having to work with me all day. So <laughs> thank you. That, you, you get a lot of uh, points there. So to my right, uh, good friend, uh, long-term uh, Camp Lab employee here, fantastic uh, technician, uh, Jimmy Browder. So thank you, Jimmy. Hey, yeah, Jimmy. We got, <laughs> they even gave you a shout-out. Uh, so we got Sydney Trout, uh, we got Whitney Mathis, and we've got Emily Okay, and I knew that too. I blanked for a second. The masks uh, got me. And in the background, there's a whole lot of people that are helping uh, out as well. So uh, thank you very much. All right, we got a good, another good case here. Uh, I want to give you uh, Jihad after we left the last one. Uh, we uh, touched up that Sapera that we had put in, uh, touched up the uh, um, popliteal, and had really good runoff, two vessel runoff out of the posterior tibial artery and the perineal. All right, so uh, for this case, 68 year old gentleman with the following risk factors, uh, started smoking, he was age 11, but uh, stopped smoking at 11 a.m. this morning. Um, and he has severe claudication bilaterally. On the right, he had, uh, he, he had rest pain initially on the left with a very small lateral heel injury, uh, but it, it's healed now, uh, but he did have an injury that was really slow healing. Uh, ABIs, as you see there, were very low. We have a, a surgeon outside facility, very nice gentleman, uh, who has an outpatient lab, uh, try, he did angiograms uh, and tried to cross the right SFA, uh, couldn't cross it. Uh, we have a very good relationship. Uh, the runoff angiograms there were billed as uh, bilateral SFA with one vessel runoff out of perineal, and he was referred. Next slide, please. Uh, previously, uh, I had done a aortography a, a and uh, runoffs and fixed the right leg because that's what he was sent for initially, but they also said go ahead and fix the left, and he needed that as well. So we fixed his right leg. I'll show you a brief picture or two of that. Uh, and his right leg feels great, um, but he still has severe claudication at short walking distances on the left. Next slide, please. This is his, from his first angiogram. You can see Jihad and others. That's a pretty dang steep uh, bifurcation, unfortunately. Um, yep. Next slide. Uh, this was his right leg. You can see the stump at approximately the distal stuff. And really, um, he had intrapopliteal stuff. You can see the posterior tibial occluded, uh, but came back. The um, anterior tibial uh, came back as well, and he was a clodican on the right. Next slide. We did have to use a reentry device. Always disappointed, but sometimes you do, and then, then just use a distal protection system because of the uh, distal disease below the knee. Next slide. Uh, did some uh, balloon, aggressive balloon angioplasty. Next slide. And these, then we put in a larger uh, diameter uh, Sapera interwoven stents. And you can see how look good both of those look as, as we're deploying them after good pre-treatment. Next slide. And then uh, we added a short silver PTX at the ostium. Next slide. And on the right, you see the synangiogram of the Sapera and then uh, good final results, no distal embolization. And again, his right leg feels fantastic. All right, next slide. So the summary, this is a uh, gentleman with a, the um, following risk factors uh, who now is here uh, for severe with an E, claudication uh, at 25 uh, feet. Um, and so we're going to intervene on his left leg. The next slide. All right. Let's go to the fluoro here. Uh, <laughs> as everything would have it, we had an extra case in between, and we had little adventures here, but it was all fun. Uh, Jimmy was coaxing me, coaching me through the whole time. So we did our uh, ultrasound here. We took pictures of the right leg. Um, here's uh, the intervention site there. 
intervention. There's the uh, super stents on the right. How long ago was that? Chris? Uh, that was about uh, three months ago. It looks so beautiful, man. Great. Right? And then uh, here's a, just a cine angiogram of the Sapera stands. Hey, look at the architecture of that. That's uh, very nice. And today we'll show you a bent knee angiogram, hopefully uh, later. All right, so then the fun started a little bit. It's like, what the heck? I, I, it was like we had an occlusion, the external iliac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we had to do a couple of things to get through that. And then we have this fun bifurcation again with not a lot of extra time. <laughs> And wanted to prolapse even with a, um, a navicross. We finally just took an angled navicross over a glide wire into the profunda and then used a glide wire advantage. If there's a lot of angulation, I really like the glide wire advantage because it won't prolapse things back. The glide wire advantage is in the profunda, and now this is a seven French ansel that you can see uh, up and around. <clears throat> here's That's our picture for work, today. Yeah. Oh, God, thank you. So here's a nice view of the profunda. <laughs> Not much of the SFA yet. Here comes the SFA. And almost similar to the last one, there's stuff in that proximal posterior tibial and then, yeah, moderate disease in the mid posterior tibial. But the other vessels look really pretty good and, and there is good flow to the foot. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's an oblique angiogram of the uh, tibial vessels. And it's pretty tight right there at the very proximal posterior tibial. And I bet you some of the other stuff is just not filling because of how tight that is. And there's that other moderate disease. I'll go back and show you that proximal posterior tibial again and try not to skim past it. But you see it right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, you saw the rest of the posterior tibial. That's not too bad, but we'll see. And then here's uh, the kind of a stumpogram uh, where there's a couple branches right there. And honestly, it's got that little stupid line there. I don't, I call it a stupid line. I shouldn't call it that, but um, those lines matter. But, you know, it, 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 sometimes they, I, the reason I say that is, uh, you know, sometimes they, they ask, you don't know whether to go into that line or just go to the stub. I like to go to the stub, but uh, that's where we are right now. So we figured we'd just cross live with you, have an adventure together, uh, and then uh, go from there, cross the, uh, the occlusion in the SFA, uh, and then uh, think together what we should do. Should we do the posterior tibial? The heat, the, he did have a small ulcer earlier, but it has healed. Uh, but it, again, we had a discussion last time about once an ulcer, maybe always a critical limb ischemia, but he has two other good vessels. So I'll, I'll go with the flow of the crowd uh, on that after uh, we successfully, hopefully, cross this uh, occlusion. So I'm going to go up right yeah. now. Uh, let me, you guys want to tell me what your uh, crossing strategies would be here? Uh, and then, you know, I'll All get right, your so wisdom, and then we'll see if we should fix a posterior tibial if we successfully get through this. Thank you, Chris, for give, giving us the opportunity. Uh, we'll start with uh, Dr. Fisher. Uh, Brian, if you were to cross the video, what is your method um, in starting to cross it? Yeah, so uh, glide wire advantage and uh, navicross almost every time. I'm even using the new uh, 018 uh, navicross. It's uh, an 018 uh, crossing uh, wire. It seemed to work quite well and had pretty good success with that. And, and Chris called that stupid what, line. There's a reason for that because sometimes actually that stupid line could be a branch uh, that. Um, it kind of gives you this uh, sense of security that maybe that's a s small lumen that left. So if you don't do a couple of leaked views of it, you can actually go into it thinking it's actually the central SFA, like, and then it's, it's a branch and you're, you kind of prefer it. So actually, Chris had it, raised a good point. So uh, uh, Wirecat or 018, Dr. Play, I guess, how would you start uh, crossing this? Well, well, I would go back to the CTOP trial that Dr. Saab uh, and you were uh, authored, and I, I really think that this point that I might need, be given the tortuosity of the uh, and the angulation of the bifurcation, I might think immediately to get posterior tibial access. There's a diseased uh, po proximal posterior tibial, and I'm thinking this could be uh, a, a flaw system case. So that's probably the how way I would start. So if you if you got the superior access and retrograde, how long do you think it'll take you to cross from the distal cap to the proximal cap? Well, according to the prime registry that you've been so successful in in, in authoring, um, most of your most of your um, access times are less than less than uh, thirty seconds. 
So yeah, you get access in 30 seconds and you cross, cross in retrograde based on the C-top. This will take you about five minutes from this uh, cap to the proximal cap coming from below. And True. now coming from about five, that's right. Coming from above, it's going to take maybe a little bit longer, but it, it's appropriate. Uh, but if you have a distal access, what happens? Lawrence, how about you? I uh, think you had and Chris, a uh, good case to, to choose here. Um, we are a um, uh, an integrate first approach, uh, and I'm still fairly old school. I, I've, I've, I've gravitated still towards an O3-5 approach. Um, whether you knuckle it or or uh, or do anything like that, I think that it works. Um, it's worked for a lot of years. Um, the alternative, of course, is I've, I've tried like the, our Japanese colleagues to use uh, 014 or 018. I like that if I if I feel like I can get through a true luminal position uh, without much uh, you know misadventures on those smaller wires. But um, uh, with this one being so uh, occluded proximally, um, I, I like trying it with an 035 wire. And to the previous point, I, I like the idea of coming retrograde, um, uh, you know, whether you have to frog leg them or actually come through the, the, the PT, um, I think is anybody's choice. I think they're both very viable alternatives. And it's amazing how we've changed approach in the last year, even five years at crossing right. these things coming from below. So uh, Chris is coming down with a loop technique and uh, it looks like the loop is looking away from the bone. Uh, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, I would like to have the loop a little bit uh, smaller, quite honestly, and a little bit more lateral. Um, you know, and so just so you know, hey, um, in just a moment, I'm going to have you just show here. Towards your point, George, let me just uh, stand on the roadmap for a second so I, it doesn't flash when I do this. We have, I don't know if you could see, um, if you could, I'll let you zero in on that for a second. Um, a little hard to see because of that, but take my word for it that right here is all tibial prep. That you can see the um, eye band right here. You see my fingers right here on the eye band. Sure. Uh, so we're ready for that posterior tibial, whether we have to cart or rendezvous or whatever we have to do. Uh, and and I'm with Lawrence for the most part. I usually will at least give it a try, integrate, and we'll do this together, uh, and then decide uh, do we need to go uh, to another technique. And then it depends on how close we really are to this uh, in terms of uh, whether we use it in re-entry or just go retrograde. Chris, are you using the, the Nevicross 035 to support you right now? I am. Uh, this is this is a, uh, and it, I, I don't like the feel of this, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry, I love the feel of this. I'm going to just turn it <laughs> quarter turn to the right. Uh, and then we're going to probably just go quarter turn to the right and hope that we're in the right place. Although I'm not sure. There we go. Uh, what I don't want to do is cause a dissection by. Yeah, I asked you, Chris, wire. because this never crosses the main. If you put the wire inside of it and go to see the yeah, uh, sure. gap and rotate it, just kind of rotate it around. And uh, it, it's amazing how it breaks the gap. It, it truly is. And unfortunately, what's not amazing with my uh, little smirky comment is I'm not in the true moment um, because it wouldn't go do that. So let me just try to go back. At, Anytime you smart during a live case, uh, you will not uh, do well. That's true. And I know that. Uh, we're in that branch yeah. there. There are. So if um, so, if we need to, you know, now we should be in a good spot. If worst comes to worst, we'll take our Navicross into the branch, put an 014 wire into the branch, and then uh, exactly. uh, take another 014 wire uh, into the other. But let's see if we can just manipulate this. And I'll, I'm not going to smirk anymore. <laughs> Jimmy, don't let me. <laughs> A, a great teaching point that Chris showed to everybody, especially those starting out, always have the everything ready to go at the beginning. It saves you time. It saves you money on on taking down all the uh, all, all the uh, all the all the dressings and everything, and it actually helps you get ready. So always have that foot prepped out for those of you starting uh, uh, your cases. All right, let's have a command. Oh, you know, even arm. after twenty, I tell you. I, I still have to call to, to oh, prep the leg. Yes, right. And let's have uh, because I always wire. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, a good point, Lawrence. Lawrence. I, I like that. This. What Chris is doing right now it's unique. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Brian. So what we're going to do, and and sometimes, as you know, you can uh, enter right next to the artery, and we're for sure in that branch. The question is, do I enter in a good way or in a bad way? So we're going to find that out together. Right, and so. it's in a good way, 
we'll put a wire down to hold our place and then take a second wire and manipulate it hopefully in the right place. So uh, we'll take a little picture here. Hey, Chris, Brian Fisher here. Uh, great case. Just real quick question. Uh, do you uh, shape the wire at all? Your command, uh, great choice for once you've got a good lesion. Do you put a shape on, uh, on it to help you uh, navigate the rest of the arterial system? I'm sorry, could you say it again? I, I had a little feedback. Sorry about that. No, just asking, uh, do you shape your wire, your 014 command, um, once you um, get back into the true woman, do you shape it before you go down the rest of the vessel? Yeah, so what we're going to do, in fact, if you could show here, you know, the command wires, you know, it's a night and all tip. And it, you know, the nice thing is it maintains it, but you got to really shape it. So we just, you know, I, I'm getting old. So I used to do it with my fingertip. Don't, <laughs> don't quit on your head so vigorously. So I just take the little introducer and make a big old bend. Depends on what we're trying to do with it. With this one, if you look at that, I think I entered just distal to um, where I want to. And I'm not sure a wire is going to go back from that branch. Um, so we're going to try this. If not, we'll just take it back, push it a couple times uh, in a different direction, and then we'll decide either to go retrograde um, or to just use an outback reentry device. We're close, but I don't, you know, I, if you look right there on the screen, I think we're lateral to the vessel, and we just somehow reentered the, the branch. So let's play with that for a minute. Uh, you got it. You got it, Chris. You do it. You get through. I think what's fighting yeah. you is your your iliac junction is not helping you at all, actually. Not not a bit. It's not my. It's not our friend right now. He's he's a nice guy. His iliac bifurcation, not so much. Now, yeah. usually what I'll do here, put a second wire just to hold our place, because then I can do whatever we need to do. Uh, that I don't like the way that. You have a so type type two CTO based on the CTOP study. And uh, and you have a very tough your iliac junction. Uh, so that, that all of that is working against you. You you actually went away, yeah, went away from the, the cap about four millimeter up from where you are. So it's uh, yeah. let's see. Let's see. Based on the C top, Chris, just uh, for discussion only, based on the C top, uh, six to seven percent of cases went had this if you had a if you came from above if you have type two lesion, and then if you went from retrograde PT access, ninety uh, percent you were able to cross a lot quicker. So you can either uh, we'll wait see how long we will give you ten minutes trying to cross this way. <laughs> without, without You're too dang kind, man. Without reentry device though, and then if you don't cross in ten minutes, then you owe Georgia PT access. I owe him what? A PTX? No, no. I, I'll give him lots of beers. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you said a PTX. I'm not buying anybody's stints. I, I think you're going to have a lot of beer tonight, my friend. It's you earn Oh, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, I'll meet you and up in Kings. I'll you meet you up in Kingsport. I'm only 50 miles away, so. Yeah. yeah that, all right, but so this is not where we want to be, and I'm going to just take it back. We'll play with it a few times in a different direction and, and see how close we are. So, Jimmy, let's do a roadmap here. I think what you're doing is it's a good it's a good way of thinking about crossing a, a com, con, sorry convex integrate approach, um, and based on the CTA, you should actually come back about almost uh, ten to fifteen millimeter from where you are, and then retry it from there. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, the first thing you go, uh, the first thing you want to do is pull it back. You know, you, you're tempted because you're so close. Guess what? You're not in the right place. You might as well try come back a little bit. We're going to get through it. It's just a question of which way. I mean, I, I, I say that, and I did not smirk that time when I said it. Uh, <laughs> God's on your side now. Yeah, yeah. But, Chris, can you try for us and see if you, if, if you can pull the wire back into the catheter and just rotate the catheter for us? And let's see what, if, it, yeah. if it does actually rotate with your yeah. torque. I'm going to rotate it right there. You mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. And we'll see. That was because it was a different loop. I wanted to see if that would give us freedom. And the answer is nope. Um, and I, I, you know what? We're so close. I may just, uh, we'll try it a few more times. If not, I'm just going to probably go with a reentry device since we're here. You know what's, you know what's happening to you, Chris, here? The, the convex is pushing you out sooner. So you actually want to enter immediately about four millimeter higher up. That's if you point the wire immediately about four, milli, four millimeter. Because we can see that. 
convex pushing you medially in that the section plane. Yeah, you see that? It's kind of the same plane every time. Yeah, no, dude. Yeah, and, and the last thing I want to do is be uh, hurting this by, you know, being so yeah. mental. Yeah, so we're not going to do that. Right. So you lost six minutes, six minutes, almost seven minutes so far. And you dissect You want to buy George Plagueis a beer. I know you do. <laughs> I got it. George and my buddies, he'll, he'll get his beer. And it's just going to keep doing the same thing. So we're... I'm just going to take it down here and let, let me ask the panel while he's working. Uh, Chris, well, just keep working. Um, guys, will. when do you decide to switch wires? What, what make, what are the steps that go through your mind? Um, let's Lawrence, a, let's start with you. I mean, when do you start changing your, uh, your access know, strategy? A, uh, exchange. I'm talking wire strategy, support catheter strategy. When do you start, start changing? How many minutes? Exchange Grand Slam. You know, um, I'm, I'm probably the worst one. You know, I always say in the lab, I'm, uh, smarter people would have quit by now and, um, and, and switched over to a different approach. So um, I, I, I take far too long in any one approach um, just because I want to give it an opportunity. Um, and here, you're so close, and, and we've entered these collaterals, and we work backwards like Chris tried to do. Um, but we'll, we'll go to an outback pretty fast. Um, I was going to ask if anybody uses N-tier. It looked like the N-tier might be a, you know, something that is potentially useful here, but I think it might be too far uh, for, that, uh, for that kind of approach. But uh, any one of these uh, re-entry catheters might be useful here. Um, I, it would have been and good. I do, and I have the V18 here uh, to, to enter the, the true lumen. I like the jacketed wires here. Um, and then, you know, try, I think that's probably the highest escalation I would use to start. And I haven't really gone to these really bad CPOs because as Jihad has been describing, I think the, the cap here is really unfavorable for you. Either you hit it dead on and it crosses. It's like hitting a good golf shot. You remember it, but almost invariably you end up getting off to one side or the other on these. Right, right. That's a good, those are good points. Brian, Brian, what do you, how long do you do it before you start changing? Yeah, I, I typically will, uh, you know, try and give myself five to seven minutes to cross. And if I'm in the same exact space and not making much progress, I'm pretty quick to switch over to retrograde access right. before I would use a reentry device. Again, just from a cost standpoint, especially they got good vessels, uh, looks good under ultrasound. Um, and it gives you an advantage in this case with some pair, uh, be able to land uh, if you needed to more close to the obstacle. So that would be my, that would be my thought process here. And you don't lose any collaterals uh, as well. So, um... And then, Chris, you, you did use command 18, right, uh, Chris, or was one four? No, no, it's a good question. Um, so, you know, for here, no, I did not. Um, if I'm trying to finesse, I like the command 014. If you're trying to push a little more, and I like both the V18 and the command 18. They're both fantastic. And by the way, if we go retrograde, that's what we will use. We'll just go um, sheathless through a 018 Navicross or whatever catheter and then just go with a, either V18 or command 18. And since it's, uh, yeah, we'll probably think about a command 18. Uh, I, so. Well, Chris, we have an important um, question here, uh, a comment actually coming to you from the entire panel, myself and uh, the team from AMP. Happy birthday, my friend. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, um, and, and you know I love you, by the way, one thing I better comment, and sometimes with a bad, bad, bad bifurcation, you can't get an outback device across. Uh, luckily, um, with no smirk, uh, it, we were okay to get that across. But as everybody knows, especially if you're going through kissing iliac stents, um, with a steep bifurcation, it can be very difficult to get up and around. All right, so I'm going to mag up an oblique here. Um, it's a birthday vibe that you got from the panel. Tell Joe. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, I love you guys. Not only I'm working, but I'm gonna buy you beer uh, on birthday weekend. So that's good, Ray. For roadmap. Okay, go ahead. Right, up to that. What, which anniversary is this of your 21st birthday, uh, Chris? No, no, I, I, I'm so Jimmy and I. This is a kind of running thing here. We're the same age. Uh, at least that's what I claim, and she hasn't denied it, which I love about you. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm pretty young. Uh, I've got a lot of miles left in the tank, I think. Uh, I hope. That's, <laughs> That's up to a greater <laughs> power than me, to be sure. Uh, you are. You're young and 
Awesome. So let's continue with that. Well, that's I'll, I'll I'll go with that. Now, I will say I don't know about you guys. I found and, and no knock to the uh, quarters people in the crowd who I love. Um, I found that the elite is a step backwards. Um, it torques less uh, favorably than the old outback. In fact, we saved a bunch of the old ones uh, until they all expired, um, and they've all expired, unfortunately. But I, I, you know, this knob to me, I don't, tell me if I'm doing something wrong. The knob to me is, is completely and utterly useless. Um, well, you cross now, I, Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I fuss at it and I, I don't like it, but it, it still works. Now, one thing we always do, and I think this is important, is we'll take a cine where we re-entered uh, on the tape. Because I want to know, and let me just get you an oblique. We, if we're going to stand, I'm going to include that re-entry point. We don't need to die, just uh, on the ruler. So I'll just kind of at least make a mark where we re-entered. That way we know, man, I got to include that in, in the territory. We were going to include that because that was disease anyhow. And then the other thing we're going to do, if we can, unfortunately that's going into a geniculate. I would like to get this wire as distally as we can because sometimes the wire sticks in this device and it is feeling mighty sticky as we speak. So I'm hoping that this will be a little kinder to me. Because otherwise, gonna, what you can do is... Yeah, it's not going to talk with you very well either because of the your iliac. Now, and 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 I think I'm going to have to try this. Uh, remember, folks, to not do an endotorectomy, so pull the wire, uh, the needle back in. Jimmy, I'm going to have you go over there and hold that sheath. And I'm going to see, I don't have much wire uh, downstream, which I don't like. And it, you got to be careful because I don't want to pull the wire back. I've already owed Pliegas too many beers to have to do this again. That was a good job of re-entering, though, Chris. Uh, congratulations. That was a good demonstration. Thanks. It was a good demonstration. I should have listened to you and gone retrograde to begin with. So we'll take a, we'll yeah. claim a dual victory there. All right. Well, you know, you could have went retrograde, but the point, you have a lot of teaching point that you gave us right now for those that are watching. So you exactly. went... That was my point, exactly. <laughs> well, you went yeah. out back with a... Very narrow, tight junction, and I noticed Chris that you couldn't took the outback like you want to, but you pushed it, and as you, as you pushed it, it kind of went into a spiral around the artery. So you actually changed direction uh, without having to be able to torque it. So yeah. a lot of good points now came I, out of it. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, so we're going to carefully take this wire off the outback without pulling it because sometimes it'll give you a little bit of interaction. Which all right, and now let's do this, Jimmy. Let's see. Uh, I tell you what, let's um, take the 018 Navicross. Uh, we're going to take an 018 Navicross and probably, so going back to the posterior tibial. Yay or nay, should we fix that posterior tibial? He's got three vessel runoff. It's, it's, it's not occluded. It's very tight. He did have a heel ulcer previously, but it's not an ulcer now. Uh, Chris, think? you told us earlier, let's actually take that Navi 018 down, take a picture, and then yeah. let's that it re examined. Yeah, no, I agree. And what I'm that's what we'll do. Uh, I was going to almost take the 035 Navi because we'd get a better picture. And I bet it would cross and say Outback did. In fact, let's do that. Let, let's see if the 035 Navi cross will go across it. If it does, we'll get you exactly what you want there. That, you know, really nice subtracted picture close to the point of action. And then we'll decide from there. Yeah. And uh, I, I bet you, Chris, that the Navi 035 will cross. Yeah, no, I'm thinking so too. He, uh, George, a, really, George doesn't yeah. think so, but I think so. Oh, I think it'll cross. I think it'll cross. <laughs> Just want you to remember, Chris, that the uh, so blood supply of the heel comes off the posterior tibial, medial, medial and lateral calcaneal branches off the perineal and posterior tibial. So, you you know, that's just something to think about from an Angie's own perspective. Yep. No, good point, George. You know, uh, uh, Brian, okay. if a patient doesn't have an ulcer now, doesn't have an active ulcer now, and he's got... That's correct. There is no, there is no runoff with this oh, okay. we're going to do right now. Do you think with, we should still go after the heat or just yeah. leave the tibials alone, alone for now? No, I, I, I want to get another good picture, a uh, really good image, and then I'd I put a wire across it and I just to make a decision based on that. Okay. Well, to, to everybody's optimism, the one place it often doesn't recross is at the reentry point. Remember, I took a picture for you. That is... Uh, the re-entry point. So let's do this. Um, let's it, take Chris, a... Uh, take wait, Chris, Chris, what do you think? 
Uh, Chris, before you take it out, do us, do us a favor before you take it out. Can you rotate the catheter actually? Sure. sure. Yes. You can. Okay, hold it. Yeah, I will. We'll get you back hold and forth. It. Hold it. Hold it. Yep. We'll come down and do that. So just hold it tight. No, no. RX. And a slight, slight forward. Right, so, yep, I got you. All right. All right. So good call. Hold that wire. All right. I'm, I'm rotating. And it's going to be like, like I on the dance floor. There we go. Yeah. See, I'm rotating like yeah. I'm shaking Once it this way. Yeah, no. that way is not, but it's a good, good way to do it, uh, but it, it didn't work. Uh, and I, I'm starting to bend my wire, so, so I'm going to take that out. Pushes. All right. But that's a good thought. You know, uh, usually it works, but uh, you have so many challenges up, up on top, man. It's, everything's... I check that. Go on the floor for me while you do that, please. All right, so what we're going to do, and this is not uncommon, as everybody knows, for reentry zones. We're just going to take a little old cor uh, coronary balloon, do a little dilation there, and then take our catheter back. It takes an extra minute, but it's the right way to do it, I think. Yeah. So, uh, um, Lawrence, considering uh, the difficulty that we've seen so far, uh, what would be your treatment strategy after you crossing here? Would you go for balloon angioplasty and stent immediately, or would you use a tracheid and ballooning or DCV? I was going to ask that question of the panel. Um, you know, kind of what's our goal here? Um, knowing that he had a previous ulcer, um, but he's really a clodicant right now. I would think that yep. anything we do is really going to be driven towards his clodication. So I would lean towards, uh, in my, my practice, I would probably dilate, put uh, um, a supera from the origin or from the exit of this occlusion back to the origin of it and uh, uh, let it restenose. So when it does restenose, uh, if it's, uh, then uh, use DCB at that point. I don't believe I would not treat with a stent here. I think you're obligated to stent it. Um, Although with the CTO stuff that they have from PACT, uh, from their global registry, you, you know, it's about a 40% chance you have stented at this point. But for this lesion length, I think you're probably at 50 chance of stenting. Yeah. Uh, Brian, how would you approach it? Yeah, typically, you know, again, I'd, I'd want to look at it uh, under IVUS to, to decide what abdorectal device I would use. I think debulking is probably going to be, uh, you know, fairly important and also depending on where we are as far as the subject of the space. Uh, and then I agree with the lesion length. Uh, it's going to be tough to just do balloon angioplasty to go for the angioplasty here and get a, a lasting result without uh, a bunch of recoil. Uh, super is a good option. You've got a good uh, nub there in the beginning. Uh, so the risk of overrunning into the common thermal is a little bit lower. I think it's an outstanding choice here. Uh, you know, again, depending on what we see with the, uh, the rest of the image. I agree with you, George. How about you, my friend? Boy, those are those are excellent questions and excellent treatment algorithms, guys. I'm gonna have none of them are wrong, and I, I'm gonna have to agree with you. This is a very long lesion with a high propensity of coming back unless we treat it appropriately. I think you have to stent this. I think the the uh, biomimetic um, and radial force of the uh, superior stent is is exactly what is needed for this kind of case. So um, I say treat it. Uh, the only question I've got is. Add DCB, add some DCB or not add DCB. I'm still waffling on that right now. So what would you do, George? Use DCB? Probably, probably. Yeah, I probably would. And then add, and then put Sapir on top of that, yes. You know, it's... Uh, look at the global or long-term data on Supera. Um, he's an expert at it. and I think he's deployed over 1,000. Uh, maybe more, but if you deploy nominally, uh, then uh, you come out with a near 90% primary patency on this stuff. I don't believe you gain a lot with DCB up front. I think if you're going to fail, then obviously the DCB may be useful, but I think you can keep, keep your powder dry, so to speak, with... That's awesome, Chris. Man, uh, your point. And Lauren, your point. point. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, can you elaborate, uh, Lawrence, can you elaborate some more on the deployment? Because Chris is one of the best at deploying Supera. And there's, uh, I think in the, in the study you're talking about, there's four different outcomes, right, based on the geometry of the stent. So what would uh, actually make the higher here if what went wrong with the stent? 
Yes, yeah, so, uh, Chris, Chris will really show you um, how to deploy the thing, but from the superb trial that we ran uh, and then the three-year follow-up, what was evident in 12 months was clear in, thir in the 36-month follow-up. In the 12-month uh, paper, uh, the pivotal trial, um, if you had a nominally deployed stent, that is within 10% of its nominal length, uh, then you had a near 90% primary patency. This is duplex-driven primary patency. Right. It was 90.5. You're right. And you, you presented that, uh, Lawrence, at the three-year freedom from TLR was 94% if it was nominally deployed. You remember that too. You presented it. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it's, so there's a wire going into the posterior tibial. Um, that's just a command. Now, folks, we're going to make a decision now because I'll tell you why. Well, let's talk about that. I'm sorry. So, um, if we don't need distal protection, which they had already opened one because I use it a lot. I don't know that we absolutely have to have one, but we spent the dollars. And I, I, I don't mind putting one in. We're way down the posterior tibial here. If we're going to use uh, embolic protection, what I'll do is I'll change out. Let's just do that now. We'll change out to the um, exchange length bare wire. Now, if we're going to use distal protection, then I'll fix the posterior tibial now if we're going to fix it and then add the uh, NAV6. If we don't think we need to fix the posterior tibial, uh, then we could just work over any wire. What do you all think? You saw, uh, let me take, get, get you back to that picture that we just took here. It, you yeah. know, it's not terrible. Uh, and I think he's going to be okay either way. Um, ah, poop, sorry. Can you, can you mag up on it just a little bit there, Chris? Just mag up yeah. just one. Well, that's yeah. a picture I've taken. So let's take the... Uh, 018 never uh, need the run off the book, Chris. This will be, oh, yeah, we'll get it. We'll get you one. And um, if, actually, if it looks good, I will, we'll just leave the tibial alone and just finish the SFA and pop seal. Okay, no, let's do that. Let's do that then. Let's just, uh, okay, let's take our, um, do you have the uh, angioscope? Yep. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just take the 6 by 200 angios. Uh, I'll tell you what, that won't cross. Give me 6 by 120 chocolate. All right, so let's just go ahead and fix. Um, and with this, especially with us being sub intimal, what's your thought about embolic protection? I, I use it pretty uh, routinely. Do we need it here, guys? No, I, I don't think it's sub Yeah, I think you can save it. Okay. All right, so we're going to try uh, what we would like to do if we can is just, you know, really uh, inflate, get a very, very big lumen, and then we'll put our Sapera uh, in. So we're going to use, uh, there's all kind of options. Um, we're going to use a chocolate. Sometimes the scoring or atherotomy balloons don't cross the reentry zone very well of a, um, from the outback. And we could just go balloon. You might ask why I spend the extra money, and I think it's a valid question if you know you're going to stent or you think you're going to stent. I, what I will say anecdotally is you get a bigger lumen with a lot less dissection. And so I'd rather not just have a real, real big dissection especially when we had to go sub -intimal. So we're going to use a, uh, um, this is a 60120 chocolate. I want to make sure it's going to cross. We'll do it on a roadmap so we'll get an idea uh, how, what our sizes are. And there it did cross. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook up our, uh, let, let's give them a little more fentanyl, please. The, the nice thing about balloon is it's got a low profile, even though, uh, it's got a, it's sort of a, it's got a coronal and flu. It's got a little profile, crosses it well, and the shaft on it is phenomenal for pushability. And uh, it's in the chocolate bar data, there are, we didn't have significant uh, dissections with it. So, a good choice. You should and, and probably so other... understand, and Jihad, you could probably discuss this more than most because you led the trial, but the chocolate balloon is the first real balloon that changes the mix of balloon angioplasty. Uh, it's a constrained balloon, which goes to volume pressure rather than size. And uh, it's, it's really remarkable. Those, those little grids tend to constrain the pillows so that you don't have differential expansion. It's a remarkable step forward in angioplasty. It's almost like you're lifting everything at the same time. You force everything to go together, you know, but, so you don't leave room for edge edge a little discomfort. I'm putting a balloon up, okay? Now, one other point here, when you aggressively um, pre- and then, okay. What do you have? What, what I was just going to say, you can see the little waste there where that re-entry zone was. Yes. 
Now, it came up 12. So I always warn us, that we're friends, this gentleman and I, uh, and I want to remain that. Um, and so I tell him, hey, we're about to put it in a balloon, you know, and, and uh, give him an extra dose of fentanyl before we do that uh, to be humane here. Go ahead and get a six by 150, Sarah, open a six by 150. Okay, come on down slowly. Now, it'd be interesting to see, uh, Lawrence, towards your point of the balloons and pillows and such, what this is going to look like after just atherotomy. I, I don't think it's going to change my strategy, quite honestly, but it will still be interesting to see. You know, at this day and age, Chris, you really, uh, I say you can't walk away from that long of an Obviously, we'll with the PTA no matter what. What do you guys think? Uh, we'll start with Brian. I'm sorry, you uh, you break up a bit. I'm sorry, Brian. Would you just balloon this if it looks good? Would you walk away, or would you still do a stun? No, so again, even with primary patency, a chocolate balloon is an excellent. Uh, I think if you're prepping the vessel, especially for superior, it's outstanding. Um, however, if you look at the primary patency, uh, it's not much better than uh, plain old balloon angioplasty. So this is not, I would consider balloon angioplasty without drugs Sorry, uh, to be a definitive uh, therapy. You would either scaffold or do uh, DCB. Yeah. Right. And I assume, George, uh, Lawrence the same. I, I think, yeah, I think I'm exactly the same. I think I, there's no doubt in my mind that this needs uh, support and this needs uh, scaffolding. So uh, I would go ahead with uh, Sapira all the way. Yeah. So now, there's a little bit of an art form here, guys, as we get closer. You know, we're not an osteolesion. So in a perfect world, it'd be great to get the um, Sapera to cover all this and not have to use a night and all stand, although that's not a crime. Um, so as we get closer here, we want to hit this part pretty hard. But remember, one, if we don't hit it all just proximal to it, once the Sapera gets to the untreated part, it will elongate close to the bifurcation. So a little bit of an art here. Uh, we'll hit it pretty hard close to where the occlusion was and then just gently uh, at the other semi-disease part. Let's do a roadmap here, please. I want to remind everybody that the right side looks fantastic three months later, so I think he's going to get fantastic results with a Sapira. Always bear that in mind. Yeah. Uh, and, and as we mentioned, I think, earlier, and I think you guys have brought it up as well, it's one of the nice therapies that's fairly length-independent. You know, in other words, night and all stance, you know, the bugaboo was length. If you put in a long night and all stance, you got a pretty AP picture, but you had an ugly restenosis rate and a bent knee angiogram. Uh, you know, this Viabon uh, and to some extent DCB and, D, um, and DES are the only, you know, stent relatively independent um, therapies that we have. Yeah, we agree, Chris, and this is one of them. So we have uh, 16 minutes. And yeah, we... we're going to get you some pairs and an Ibis, and we'll be happy here, hopefully. So, let's, so we, have, uh, we would like to focus more on the deployment, Chris. Uh, and yep, uh, can... we're going to get that right next. Appreciate it. You are the best in the world at deploying the stunt. And, uh, I, I, I would say there's a guy who says, yeah, yeah, uh, who, who's been <laughs> to this lab that I would, uh, I would say... Uh, he, he, he is the master who's taught many of us. And, you know, we're speaking of Andre Schmidt and uh, Dirk and his colleague. Our brother Andre is... is uh, he, you know, uh, Jimmy and these guys used to think I was pretty good until Andre came here to do cases. Um, and not only was he better looking, he was nicer. Uh, he was faster. He was smoother. It was just, it was downhill for, the, for me there. Go ahead and back this up, please. <laughs> I would not say anything. If we, take a, uh, if we could take a general poll, does anybody think that Andre is actually human? Can we <laughs> see a show of hands? No, he's, he, he's a superhuman being. Uh, so, all right. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get our first 60150 Sapera. All right. So we're going to get Sapera number one uh, ready. Um, yeah, right. All right, ready, Jimmy? Go ahead and get our Sapera. Uh, All right, we're going to make Chris, a roadmap first. The, yeah, go ahead. The, uh, the nomenclature of uh, Sapera stents. Yeah, that's a good point. And I tell you, one of the things about that nomenclature, and, and in fact, the nomenclature, by the way, it doesn't look so bad for just a balloon, um, but um, the nomenclature is uh, the 
outer, so in the U.S., they don't have the half size of Germany. It's one of the nice things that one time we have something they don't have. And I will say that a few years ago, um, when they did the half sizes, the six and uh, uh, you know, fives, you know, the five five means an outer diameter of five five. Is that right? Okay. I had to even think because we they changed the lingo on us. Uh, whereas that same five five in the U.S. would be a five zero oh in Europe, I believe. Now we're using a six, and what I found is, you know, the Lawrence already said that with the five five, what we call five five now. You got wire. <laughs> Do you have it? Yes or no? All right. Um, so, um, <laughs> so the uh, five five uh, the five five, five yeah. here. Yeah. The five five is what was used in the superb trial for the most of it. Um, this is a six o Sapera. So I found that bigger is better, and really like uh, that. Uh, so let me just see one thing here. I just want to make sure we cover that little action. All right, so there's a little dissection down there, so we're going to cover it now. Yep. One of the things that will happen sometimes when you use a big one uh, here is the very end may be slightly elongated. Jimmy, in just a moment, I'll have you hit view roadmap. Okay, view roadmap, please. And they're going to want to go forward, but you can pull it back a little bit, Floro, there. Or excuse me, view roadmap. Again. Okay, so view roadmap. And I can still pull back just a hair. Okay, pull uh, view roadmap. Okay, good. All right, now once I have the distal end, we're going to take that road map off and mag up all the way to six. And then it's a matter of going slow. Uh, if you'll focus on hands here, if you would, uh, and just, and I'll put floor over here. The, you can see a little bit of elongation down there, but now hopefully the rest of it will not elongate in the areas where we prep. Beautiful. And what we so want is about that, that's about nominal. Uh, and we don't want, I just elongate a little bit, shame on me and we'll get rid of that. Sorry about that. Um, so how do you, how do you get verbally describe getting rid of that? So if there is something, so we, if it's perfect, we don't post dilate at all. Uh, if there is a little elongation, that's one time post dilating can help a little bit and Anytime you start to elongate even a little bit or, or do anything that happens, the first thing to do is slow down mm -hmm. and adjust, you know, and it, it's all in the preparation and sizing and then nice mag going slowly and sound. Now we're starting to stack it again. And yes, it takes a little, that little stack in there if you, if you want it to Chris, or I see. Say it again. Uh, this little stacking that is happening with you right now, if you wanted to eliminate that, could you pull on the stand without? Yes, absolutely. So okay. if, if it's stacking, we'll pull it back. If it's elongating, I'll push forward. But if you haven't pre-dilated well enough, there's no amount of push and pull that's going to save you. Yeah, I mean, it'll help you, but it won't save you. Uh, so. Yeah, great. Right, One so of the keys uh, with this stent that uh, Chris will uh, probably uh, agree with, I hope, is that once the stent is in place, with very few exceptions, there's not much post-dilatation that effectively changes much of anything here. It, since That's your correct. thing is a, is a strand, it's an interwoven strand of nitinol, so you're just pushing on a strand. It's not like a slotted tube stent. So it's a, the prep on this is absolutely quintessentially important to its deployment. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, Lawrence, you're completely correct. And I'm, I had to slow down because I had minor elongation. It's not bad, but it's annoying. We don't want that. We want perfect. Um, so this is what we want somewhere in there. You know, there is a teaching curve. I think while Chris is doing this, there's a teaching curve for all of us who start like this. And I think we think of it as a traditional stent where we just deploy it and not pay attention. Whereas the more attention you pay, like you said, Lawrence, and uh, is the better off the, the stent is deployed. Is that? Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah, we had a we had a run curb of at least two tr two stents uh, before they enrolled in the trial, and um, there is a learning curve. I mean, this one comes out by a, by being ratcheted out as opposed to a push pull or a pin technique uh, right. for all these stents. Now, the, one other thing I'll mention is that when you have longer superiors, especially if you're doing two or three, 
it can pull the wire back. And that's you know important if you have a critical wire position or if you've got a, a basket, you know, a nav six or any basket for that matter. And And so now we're releasing that last phase. Now, what we're going to do now, you know, we've got a measuring stick in our hand. We could pay, take the Navicross measuring stick, but we're going to use the Sapera measuring stick. So let's see what a 150 would get us so we can pick appropriately our next stent. And we've got 10 minutes here, okay. Uh, all right, ready? So, so this is a... There's what a 150 will give us. And that's about right what we want. Let's take a quick roadmap, right? Okay. So Chris, what did you do? You looked at the stand that you deployed and you looked at the numbers and then you over yeah, that. The other thing, what, what I want to do here, Lawrence, is see, this is a 150. And so with oblique angiogram, I didn't do enough oblique. I want to see how close I am so I can pick this stent and see can we nail it or not. So let's do four, okay, ready? All right, um, we got this. All right, that's what a 150 would get us, because I don't want to put it into the, uh, into the, you know, the distal common from or take that out. All right, so let's have a six by 150. Now what I might do- Chris, are you a, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask you, uh, are you going to overlap to any degree or is it a butt? Yeah. Uh, one stent to the other. I think one centimeter, Lawrence, is what we'll usually do. Now, because this 150 is getting close to the bifurcation, because I had a little air of elongation, we've got eight minutes. I'll still get you here. Go ahead and open that. Grab us a, a, a 7 by 100 ultra score if you got one right here. If you don't have a 7 by 100 ultra score, just give me a 7 by 100. Do you have one of your Armada 0187s? I'm going to just hit that a little bit harder. Um, just to make sure that we don't elongate this at all. It'll just take a moment. Hurry up, please. Hmm. It'll only take a moment. Okay. Hurry up, please. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Gently. Is that a 7 by 100? Yeah, good. <laughs> Chris, I, I said please. I hope you heard that. I did. Chris, I've watched this space a lot, and uh, one of the things that I always appreciate uh, is, especially with super deployment, but honestly, with any cases you've done, uh, the idea of vessel preparation has always been the, the hallmark of the treatment. And I think that's why you've had such success. So it's, uh, again, great to see that here. And uh, again, been a real pleasure to see that over the years. Thank you very much. And I, I think you're right. Even though it's going to take us a couple minutes and a, a very brief hurry up, please. Um, we'll just go up and down, but make sure that this is fully prepped. And then the other one won't have a sliver of elongation. Then we'll deploy the other one for you. Show a quick IVIS and, uh, and an angiogram. Ready? All right, so it's just a seven by 100 balloon. We're just going to do a little extra prep. Thank you. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good message there, Chris. I, you know, so you want to get vessel, better vessel preparation because you had a couple of areas that you didn't hit well this point. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I hate having areas that aren't prepped well. Uh, yeah. Elongation, so it's 100. That's another uh, unique thing with here as well is that, you know, once you deploy it, you go back and do a balloon angioplasty. The stint itself will actually um, shorten and then elongate some um, once you take the balloon down. So it's important, again, you start to affect areas of the vessel and you don't have coverage in areas that you treated with just balloon angioplasty. It's another really just an important point. Uh, the vessel preparation is absolutely important. So, uh, absolutely. so, Chris, as you hit your balloon, that's a question for you from now, audience. Yeah. How do you choose between uh, angled uh, CXI 035 and Navicross 035? That's a good question. So I think, you know, everybody has their, what's in their lab and, and, and what's favorite. I think most of them are very good. The CXI, the Quick Cross from Phillips, uh, and the Navicross by Taruma. Come on down. Um, no, CXI, CXI I, I, 035. Sorry. CX, CXI is made by Cook, I think. Yes. Cook, Cook. Cook. Right, you're correct. Uh, yeah, no, I was saying the, the quick cross by Phillips and then the Tarumo is the Navicross. If I misspoke, I'm sorry. Um, but I think it depends. I think the Navicross for me is pretty braided, and, and I, I like if I really need extra push, uh, we like that. Um, let's see. What the hell is this? Why are there two balloons marked? 
that's the tip of the balloon has two markers on it. It kind of, yeah, I don't know what the heck. Uh, you know, they used to be the, okay, gotcha. All right. You know, some of the longer balloons have the two markers in the middle, you know, like the long Medtronic DCBs. Um, the I, ultra score is a replacement for Vasca track. And for old guys who, <laughs> yeah, you think these got to keep me in line here, these little sneaky double markers. And that's, it's a young guy's uh, advice. Second question for you, Chris. Uh, yeah. why, do, why, why wouldn't you use Pioneer over Outback to give you more information at the time of reentry and give you guidance yeah. for procurement? Yeah, I, I think there are times that I'll use that. If you're trying to get, let's get the other stuff here. Um, I think if you really absolutely have to be precise, let's say we're reentering in the popliteal or somewhere in a common Ferrari, or if you're going in an iliac and you want to hit that little nub, you've got to hit the lumen. Um, in the middle of the SFA, it's a little bit harder to track. And remember, uh, the, one thing I thought about Giada is remember the aortic bifurcation here. And the yeah. more equipment and stuff that you go around there, we're in the SFA. If we were going to pop, I would have still tried it. If we're in the SFA and we got that bifurcation, I think it's a little bit harder to use. That, that's all I was thinking on that. It's a, certainly another good choice. All right, so but we're going you, in with you, another. It really is a good point, though. That's, uh, the, uh, the Pioneer is a bulkier device. And, uh, Correct. You just want to get done here um, without losing your yeah. sheath or your wire. And so it's a good Losing thing. my what? <laughs> oh, you're my sheath. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Lawrence, here, here's your, uh, so here's the, I'm going to buy a one center. See that right there? Yeah. That's all. Yeah. We don't need more than that, I don't think. You almost like post the previous stunt with us, stunt. That's, that was really cool. And uh, with a seven millimeter balloon pre dill look how smoothly things are going now. And it went smoothly earlier too, Chris, but. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, but you're right. All right, let's, uh, we only have a couple minutes. So, it's, so what we'll do after this, we'll take a coronary cine of these and we'll get you an eye and then an angiogram. But look how he, this is, I'm not fighting as much as you notice. Yes. Just by doing that extra little uh, bit of uh, work up front. And that's one clue. If you have trouble with a Sapir, before you put your next one in, figure out what it was that you didn't do the first time and do it better. Uh, and so now look at this. You know, this thing's beautiful the whole way up and down like the other one should have been. So now you're going to take your time and stack it so you can kind of end it where you want to. Exactly. Yeah, his target was so, a five centimeter mark. Is that right? Yeah, we right. want to be slightly above that. Yeah. The hard thing about Stupera is that, you know, it's three times the length of the shaft. So you'll never gauge where you are except at the end. It's, it's one of the hardest things to realize. And that's why vessel prep is so important. In, in the trial, if you hit it within 10% or hit nominal, you had a high uh, 80s and low 90s outcome. And if mm. you eat, it, you dropped it by over 40 points because it loses all that radial strength. Right. It looks really you know what good I here. Doing, what I've started to do, Lawrence, is I quit looking at that, trying to do the math of three. Um, I just look at the stent time diameter. So let's back this out carefully. All right. So we're running short on time. I know that. Let me just uh, take this out. What we'll do is a couple things. We'll do a coronary angiogram of the stents. Uh, we'll do a subtracted angiogram and an IVUS, and then we'll, we'll do touch-up work off screen if that's okay. So let's go to corners, uncouple, please. Yeah, just do a run after the foot of everything will be good. We have 50 seconds, so we'll, you'll be able to do it. Thank you so much. All right, there, so there's a Sapera stent. Looks pretty darn good. There's that one little area of that we won't like. Let's go to upper one leg. And tell you what, go ahead and give me the IVUS, and then we'll go to upper one leg. So again, just like last time, what you get used to when you do the IVUS at the end is a boring, redundant, perfect zero uh, throughout the entire stent, even in calcium. Yep. So I'll do the IVUS real quick, and then we'll give you an angiogram, and then we'll do any touch-up stuff. And Chris, would you agree it's maybe one of the only stints that you see that, especially even if the vessel's not uh, prepped accordingly, it still is circular. So it's a round O every time. It may oh, be much smaller, but it's Completely enough. correct. So let's look at that and show you so we're not just blowing you smoke. If I didn't, 
All right, so you can see as I'm whisking down there at the beautiful boring circle. Uh, all right, ready? Hit record, beautiful. please. Yep. All right, here we go. There's a Sapera. You ready? Very nice. Start Very saying, nice. Start saying ho hum, ho hum, because it's going to look like that the whole way. Great job, Chris. Beautiful. No, thanks. That's a Sapera. That's uh, not Chris. That's a, that's the beauty of that stent. Let's see, if Dr. Sao deployed it, it would not look like this. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now let's uh, do a quick subtracted angiogram, and then we'll get, let's go ahead and uh, go to up your upper one leg. Yep, I'll get my foot off. All right, my foot's off. Okay, She's, she just told me, would you hurry up, please? And I did. All right, ready? Here we go. We love you, Chris. <laughs> Likewise. By the way, we're going to have a, a party here in Tennessee later. Uh, mm. These guys have earned it. Uh, and if you want to, anybody wants to join us, come on down. Otherwise, we'll just party. Uh, ready? You enjoy it. You deserve it, Chris. That's really, uh, really beautiful. Very nice. Thank well you. done. Well done. All right. Well, guys, we'll do our touch up work. Thank you all very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Happy anniversary, Jihad. Thank you so much. Please uh, thank your lab for us, all of them, and thank you. And enjoy your day today. Happy birthday. All right, nice. take care. Happy birthday, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thank Happy you all. Birthday, Thanks very much.